please call the roll. Richard Bardak. Here. Peg Conway. Here. Ed Hatback. Here. Alita Kamai. Here. Tom Mutney. Here. Ray Warren. Here. Natalie Wolf. Here. Scott Armour. Here. Kevin McDonough. Here. Chief Wallace. Here. Rick Kay. Here. Everyone, please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In accordance with our charter, the uh, next item on the agenda for our meeting, which our charter provides that the first regularly scheduled meeting in December following the election, uh, that we will take the nomination for mayor and vice mayor. So first nomination for mayor. I'd like to move that to nominate uh, Tom Uthink to serve another term as our mayor. Second. Okay, it has been moved and second that uh, Tom Uthink uh, for mayor. Uh, are there any other nominations for mayor? If not, it has been moved and seconded uh, that Tom Uthink serve the next two years as mayor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Is there an issue? Well, all right. So before we uh, proceed, why don't we have um, a swearing in for Councilman Warren, who was not able to attend the swearing in a week ago Sunday. Uh, so if the uh, if I'd like to move that Natalie Wolf continue as our vice mayor. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that Councilwoman uh, Wolf serve the next two years as vice mayor. Are there any other nominations? Seeing that, it has been moved and seconded that uh, Councilwoman Wolf serve the next two years as vice mayor. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Be noted that the uh, Approval is unanimous. We will now have the swearing in of the uh, mayor and vice mayor. Solemnly affirm that I shall follow 
that I shall follow and uphold the Constitution and uphold the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America and the laws of the United States of America, the Constitution and laws of the State of Ohio, the Constitution and laws of the State of Ohio, and the Charter and Ordinances, and the Charter and Ordinances of Amberley Village, Ohio, of Amberley Village, Ohio, and shall faithfully perform my duties as mayor, and shall faithfully perform my duties as mayor, as prescribed by the Charter, as prescribed by the Charter, and ordinances of Amberley Village, and ordinances of Amberley Village, and the laws of the State of Ohio, and the laws of the State of Ohio. Congratulations. We're starting with our village solicitor and also our village prosecutor. This is Ordinance 2019-12. Um, Kevin McDonough has been our solicitor now, our village solicitor, for a couple of years. Um, he's at Wood and Lamping, and um, he is, this is a homecoming to Amberley, and we're happy to have him back. A very good seatmate for these meetings. Um, and, our, and our prosecutor, Stacey Lefton, um, is hiding in the back row, but also part of this um, ordinance. So we are, these are both reappointments um, and we have the business today is to, we're going to waive the three readings and uh, as well. So the first, oh. Oh. I'm going to abstain. I'm married to the prosecutor, so probably please. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that we, that I would like to move that we waive the three readings for ordinance 2019-12. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we waive the three readings for the respect to ordinance 2019-12, appointing uh, the village solicitor. Are there any questions or comments with respect to that? If not, it's been moved and seconded that we waive the free reading for ordinance 2019-12. Please call the vote, please. Richard Bardak? Yes. Hey, Conway? Yes. Ed Hadback? Yes. Alita Kamine? Yes. Tom Buting? Yes. Ray Warren? Yes. Natalie Wood. Yes. Okay, next um, I'd like to move that we adopt ordinance 2019-12 appointing our solicitor and prosecutor. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we adopt ordinance 2019-12 appointing uh, Mr. McDonough as village solicitor and Ms. Uh, Lufton as our um, village prosecutor. Are there any questions or comments? If not, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt Ordinance 2019-12. Please call the roll. Richard Bardak. Hey, Ed Conway. Yes. Ed Hadback. Yes. Alita K. Mine. Yes. Tom Muthi. Yes. Ray Warren. Yes. Natalie Wolf. Yes. Uh, and finally, um, I would like to move that we adopt Ordinance, uh, sorry, um, declare an emergency for Ordinance 2019-12. Uh, the appointment of our solicitor and prosecutor. Second. 
Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we adopt Ordinance 2019-12 as, as an emergency measure which would allow the appointment to go into immediate effect. Are there any questions or comments? If not, it's been moved and seconded that we adopt Ordinance 2019-12 as an emergency measure. Please call the roll. Richard Bardak. Abstain. Peg Conway. Yes. Ed Hatback. Yes. Alita Kamine. Yes. Tom Mutney. Yes. Ray Warren. Yes. Natalie Wolf. Yes. We'll now move on to the appointment of the village treasurer. Yes, I am happy to recommend that we're, uh, we're going to reappoint. We'd like to reappoint Rick Kay as our treasurer. This is a position he has held and faithfully served in since 2008 with lots of flexibility and uh, creativity to get all the tasks taken care of. So, uh, like we did with the solicitor, I'd first like to move that we uh, waive the three readings on Ordinance 2019-13. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we, that we waive the three readings with respect to Ordinance 2019-13, the appointment of the village treasurer. Are there any questions or comments? If not, it's been moved and seconded that we waive the three readings on Ordinance 2019-13. Please call the roll. Richard Bardak. Yes. Peg Conway. Yes. Ed Hattenbach. Yes. Alita Kamine. Yes. Tom Muthin. Yes. Ray Warren. Yes. Natalie Wolf. Yes. Okay, now I'd like to move that we adopt Ordinance 2019-13, appointing Rick Kay as village treasurer. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we adopt Ordinance 2019-13, appointing Rick Kay as village treasurer. Are there any questions or comments? If not, it's been moved and seconded that we adopt Ordinance 2019-13. Please call the roll. Richard Bardock. Yes. Peg Conway. Yes. Ed Hattenbeck. Yes. Alita Kamine. Yes. Tom Muthink. Yes. Ray Warren. Yes. Natalie Wolf. Yes. And finally, I move that we pass this as an emergency measure in order that it can go into effect uh, right away and have continuous service from our Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we adopt Ordinance 2019-13 as an emergency measure. Are there any questions or comments? If not, it's been moved and seconded that we adopt Ordinance 2019-13 as an emergency measure. Please call the roll. Richard Bardak. Yes. Hey Conway. Yes. Ed Hattenbach. Yes. Alita Kamine. Yes. Tom Muthin. Yes. Ray Warren. Yes. Natalie Wolf. Yes. Okay, now we move on to the appointment of the clerk of council. Thank you. Ordinance 2019-14 is an ordinance appointing Tammy Reasoner as clerk of council, and it's our next ordinance. Tammy serves a dual role with the village, being the executive assistant to Scott Larmer, the manager, and she's also the clerk of council, and I will add, she's also a resident of the Andalusian village. Um, I first like to make a motion to waive three readings of ordinance 2019-14, appointing Tammy Reasoner as the clerk of council for the 2019-2021 council. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we waive the three readings with respect to Ordinance 2019-14. Are there any questions or comments? If not, it's been moved and seconded that we waive the three readings with respect to Ordinance 2019-14. Please call the roll. Richard Bardak. Yes. Hank Conway. Yes. Ed Hattenbach. Yes. Alita Kamon. Yes. Tom Butte. Yes. Ray Warren. Yes. Natalie Wolf. I'd now like to make a motion to approve Ordinance 2019-14, appointing Tammy Reasoner as clerk of council. Second. Okay, it's been moved and second, seconded that we adopt Ordinance 2019-14, appointing Tammy Reasoner as clerk of council. Are there any questions or comments? If not, it's been moved and seconded that we adopt Ordinance 2019-14. Please call the roll. Richard Bardak. Yes. Peg Conway. Yes. Ed Hattenbach. Yes. Alita Kamine. Yes. Tom Muth. Yes. Ray Warren. Yes. Natalie Wolf. Yes. I now move to pass Ordinance 2019-14 as an emergency measure for the necessity of providing the village with the services of the clerk. Okay, we moved and seconded that we adopt Ordinance 2019-14 as an emergency measure. Are there any questions or comments? 
not has been moved and seconded that we adopt ordinance 2019 14 as an emergency measure. Please call the roll. Richard Bardak. Yes. Peg Conway. Yes. Ed Haddenbach. Yes. Alita K. Mine. Yes. Tom Muthin. Yes. Ray Warren. Yes. Natalie Wolf. Yes. Okay, thank you and congratulations to Slister, the the prosecutor, our treasurer, and our clerk of courts. Look forward to working with you all. Thank you. Uh, well now we're on to the approval of our minutes. Uh, first, our regularly scheduled uh, council meeting of November 11, 2019. Those minutes were circulated in the packet of the council. Are there any additions, changes to those minutes? Seeing none, the minutes can be approved. There were also the uh, minutes from our work session meeting of November 12, 2019. Are there any changes to those minutes? Seeing none, those minutes can consider, uh, be considered approved. I will now move on to uh, the next item on the agenda, which is a presentation to our uh, supervisor for our main speak. I'm going to come down front. This presentation was associated with uh, the tornado that occurred in Beaver Creek in the Dayton area. And a number of, number of communities, including Amberley, uh, committed resources to the effort to respond to, to that effort. And Tony and his team were a part of that team. And the city of Beaver Creek came around to the various communities and read proclamations and made presentations. So I would like to first read the proclamation that the city of Beaver Creek made to the village of Amberley. Whereas the Memorial Day tornado hit Beaver Creek on Monday, May 27, 2019 at approximately 11.18 p.m., leaving a path of massive destruction and loss. And whereas Amberley Village came to our aid, giving tirelessly of your time energy and effort to assist us with the damage recovery and whereas neighbors helping neighbors span beyond the borders of Beaver Creek with contributions from cities, villages, townships, park districts, counties, and the state and whereas Amberley Village generously provided staff and equipment to help the Beaver Creek residents begin to recover from the devastation left by the tornado. Now, therefore, I, Bob Stone, mayor of the city of Beaver Creek, Ohio, along with the city council and our entire community, wish to thank Amberley Village and express our sincere appreciation for your assistance as our city continues the process of healing and rebuilding. Your presence and generosity in our time of need was uplifting to Beaver Creek and will never be forgotten. Uh, Tony's team went up for three days uh, to the city and, and contributed over 50 hours uh, between six employees towards that cleanup. Uh, and, you know, this is a case of, you know, this is something the communities do. There have been cases where Amberley Village, after a storm or something, has had um, other communities help us. But Tony, I really want to thank you and your team for everything you did uh, to do that. It really puts Amberley Village in a great light. And each of, each of Tony's team is going to be receiving a copy of this um, framed picture as well as a, a uh, memorial. A, uh, see, it's a challenge point uh, and each of their team will be receiving this. And Beaver Creek also wanted to give each of these to the members of council. And I, I would have to say, uh, the members of council are receiving this on behalf of the, all the residents of Amberley Village because it is really all the residents of Amberley Village that was willing to commit Tony and his team to, to allow that, you know, because it, it does take away from what they were able to do here, but it was something very critical. So. Tony, thanks a lot.
Okay, we'll now move on to the next item on the agenda, which is our finance report for October 2019. I'd like to talk about the general fund financial status as of the end of October. Uh, earnings tax for the month of October totaled a little over $247,000. This was up just slightly from October 2018's collections of $245,000. The estimate for collections for this year was $2,750,000. As of the end of October, the village has obtained $2.6 million, so we're 95% away from the collections for the earnings tax. The village did not receive any property tax during the month of October, which is not unusual. Uh, the village did book uh, a little over $5,200 in local government fund. Those are monies that come from the, through the state of Ohio back to the village. So our revenue for the total, the revenue for the month of October totaled $380,000. That brings our total for the general fund uh, to $4.7 million. Our estimate for the entire year is $4.9 million, so we're at 95% collection at that point, at this point as well. On the expense side for the general fund, the expenses for the month of uh, October total a little over $457,000, and uh, our expenditures as year to date for uh, as of October 31st is just a little over $4 million. The budget for 2019 is $5.3 million. So the village has expended 75% of the budget as of the end of October. And that leaves us with an unencumbered general fund balance at the end of October of $5.9 million. Are there any questions for me? Okay, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, and that is for the uh, group of citizens to speak. And the way uh, for those that are unfamiliar uh, with this under our charter, any resident or any individual can speak before council. Our charter provides a uh, time limit of three minutes, and just to help people out, this uh, button up here it'll show green when the, the green when it starts at 30 seconds it'll go to yellow, and at the end of three minutes it'll go to red. So our first. Uh, Person to address council is Rabbi Smoke. So help me. Thank you so much, and uh, I've been told to go ahead and at this point state my name, which is Moshe Smolkin, and I live at 3240 Fairhaven Lane. I'm really quite honored uh, to, to be here and to be living here in Amberley Village. As a little bit of background, uh, I grew up in Texas and New Mexico. Uh, actually, uh, my, my bachelor's was in mathematics from Brandeis University. My master's is in secondary math ed uh, from Tufts. And I was a high school math teacher for five years before I went to rabbinical school out in Los Angeles. Um, I interned uh, in Venice, uh, Venice Beach, California, and uh, for the last decade have been the rabbi at Ohave Zion Synagogue in Lexington, Kentucky. And I'm uh, just thrilled to, to be the new senior rabbi at Adath Israel Congregation. Um, every interaction since moving here that I've had with any of the uh, officials uh, from Amberley Village has been wonderful. Uh, whether it's uh, asking for uh, how, how to set up things uh, in, in terms of uh, our house and things like that, whether any interactions with, with the police. Um, Chief Wallace, I'm very grateful for uh, just a, an incredible department and incredible staff that, that you have uh, provided the city. I'm very grateful for you. Thank you so much. Um, really, <clears throat> uh, I also wanted just to express my immense gratitude for this council. It is not uh, always perhaps easy to be where you are uh, in the role of governance and leading our community into the future. Uh, the Bible shares that King Solomon had uh, asked for wisdom and God was pleased with that request. And so um, I, I wish to bless all of you with, with wisdom and the sensitivity to listen to each individual's concerns while recognizing that it literally may be impossible to satisfy each individual's concerns. Um, Tim Patton is, uh, is a wonderful individual and manages the facilities at Adath Israel Congregation. And our president, John Stillpass, was praising him and praised him for both keeping the temperature too hot and too cold um, <clears throat> in the synagogue. And I think there's a, there's a lot to be said for that, that, uh, that you're in a difficult role 
Uh, I think it, it's, it's a very important role because it guides our community into the future. Any way that I can help, I'm very glad to. I've been kind of in various places across the Jewish world, and I think actually that having different viewpoints is very important, whether it's in Judaism or it's in politics. And if I can be a support to any of you, if you ever have any questions regarding uh, Judaism or the Jewish community, please, please don't hesitate at all uh, to reach out to me. I want to support you in any way that I can, and I thank you for the time this evening. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. My name is Matthew Kraus, and I live at 2580 Twigwood Lane. And I'm here uh, representing the Amberley Village Human Rights Commission, which consists of the chair, Monica Lira, uh, James Boney, the vice chair, um, myself, and Nancy Warren, who's also here. And then we also had David Gladney, but he was transferred to China for work, so he couldn't make it and serve on the commission anymore. So thank you for the opportunity to speak before you. Um, this commission was established by an ordinance of Amberley Village Council, and we thought, it, and it's a new commission, we thought it'd be appropriate to at least report on what we have been doing. And um, we've really had two tasks that we have been considering. First is we were supposed to establish a format for any complaints um, dealing with uh, violations of human rights for protected classes, particularly uh, race, gender, and sexual orientation. And so we have established an email um, that's available at the Amberley Village website for any complaints. And I'm happy to report we haven't had any complaints yet. Um, and the second uh, part of what the commission has been doing is trying to get a sense of the landscape of what are, how are human rights uh, being protected? Are there any issues in the community? And what we've been uh, delighted to discover is that people feel very comfortable in the village of Amberley, um, that they feel very supported and, uh, and uh, valued in this community. And so we have also felt that we want to uh, advertise and promote um, the values and this um, uh, uh, atmosphere of um, caring for people uh, in all these protected classes. So we've ha had, I think, something in the newsletter uh, that came out showing that we exist, and that also testifies to how supportive Amberley is of uh, all peoples regard and, and all diverse uh, people. And also we were had a table at the Ice Cream Social, and we had some very positive feedback, and people were who didn't know that we existed were delighted to know that Amberley is supportive of this type of initiative. And so that's really what we're working on um, now is to address any complaints, which we hope won't happen, but also to uh, advertise and promote the fact that Amberley is such a warm and welcoming place. And uh, our next meeting is this Thursday, and all uh, members of council are, of course, welcome to come, and residents are welcome to come, and um, we're happy to entertain any suggestions and uh, feedback. Thank you. Oh, and I, yeah.
first, uh, thanks so much for coming here and sharing uh, what's been going on. In fact, um, you're certainly, as well as Monica and the whole uh, committee, certainly welcome to come to council, uh, uh, perhaps maybe on a regular basis, to uh, give us a report in terms of what's going on, what, what feedback you have. Um, and certainly if you, uh, if you have any needs, if the committee, the commission has any needs, to certainly share them with us as well. Thank you. Uh, next resident, Dr. Abby Newport, who is really a double resident and both a uh, living and a working in a Hi, I'm Abby Eucalus. My address is 6696 Fair Oaks Drive. And I have the great pleasure of also working in Amberley Village um, at Mercy Health. Uh, Amberley Village, 8599 Ridge Road. So I'm kind of here really more representing Mercy Health. My office manager was supposed to be here, but she unfortunately is at an emergency room with a family member right now, so she couldn't be here. Um, so the issue essentially revolves around uh, rush hour on Ridge in the morning primarily. Um, we usually have our first visit at eight in the morning and then at 8.15 and on a rainy, snowy, or a day where there is traffic on the highways due to an accident, the entire traffic flow on Ridge, as you all probably can imagine, is um, messed up. And so people can take you know, 20 minutes to travel, five minutes, so very often our first patients are late to their appointment. So that is why I'm here, to see if uh, there was a way to have perhaps um, a police officer at a corner, maybe um, Ridge and Galbraith, or even closer to the J around Cross County where things seem to tie up to help move the traffic along. Since we are, um, you know, have, we are an employer in Amberley and it's hard for us to see our patients timely and then it kind of throws off the whole rest of the morning for everybody. It doesn't happen every day, but it's pretty predictable on a bad weather day or if there's an accident. Um, and even people will try to get around and sometimes there's no escape, even if you go down to um, Reading Road or try to work yourself around, there's still no easy way to not have a long trip. So, that's it. <laughs> Questions? You may <laughs> no, we can, uh, we'll take a look at it on traffic flow. I mean, us changing, operating the intersection of Galbraith and Ridge or another intersection, we create other issues other places. That's why the sequence of lights are set the way they are. Unfortunately, with that intersection, some of the lights are Redding's lights, then there's our lights. So right. uh, the manager's been working with their engineers as well as our engineers trying to come up with a way to get a better sequence to get the more traffic through at any given time. Right. And people complain about getting off Cross County. It's definitely been a little bit worse since Redding High School um, reopened. Right. And also the corner where people have to turn out of our um, main drive is an accident waiting to happen, yeah, <laughs> as you can imagine. A, a, an additional so. stop line in that area. Mm -hmm. Tony has been working on that as well. Mm -hmm. okay. we'll, we'll, you know, uh, we'll go up there and watch it okay. and see what we can do. Just want to make you aware. <laughs> no, in, in, okay. we, we, we are, we're aware it's a problem. But, right. but the amount of traffic, if, if it, the weather, whether it's rain, snow, or whatever, a lot of people won't drive the highway in the rain. So everybody comes off. That's why Reading Road is just as bad. Ridge is just as bad. Mm -hmm. And we have the same problem when there's an accident. Our, our traffic doubles and triples here. Right. Because of that. Yeah. And it happens in the evening as well, but the bigger concern is in the morning just getting the day started. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next person, Susan Clay. Hi, I'm Susan Glazer at 9055 Rolling Ridge Court. And I'm here once again just to speak on behalf of uh, the Amberley Green. What I remember from the last workshop meeting that I attended, Tom Muthing mentioned that the property value of the Amberley Green is worthless. You said that quite a few times. I walked away from that going, really? If it's that worthless, why is the JCC interested in the property? Well, one of the reasons, because you're giving it to them for a dollar a year. But you were also discussing other possibilities of retail and whatnot. 
hospitals, nursing homes, et cetera, coming. If it was worthless, why would they want to come? So that's a question I would like to have answered at some point. I don't understand why it's worthless. Secondly, before we make any future decisions on the plan, the location, the zoning, et cetera, will we get definitive earnings tax rev revenue from the JCC? Will we also get information on how many jobs will be created at the Green and at the current campus? This would seem to be a critical need to know regarding traffic flow, congestion, required safety services, and potentially impact on these services before we make any deals, proposals, or changes to current property. My next question to you is, will the village and the JCC guarantee this earnings tax revenue? That's a pretty important one. So will the village, Amberley Village, and the JCC guarantee this earnings tax revenue? I have a lot of other questions, but those are the main ones. But mostly, what I'm concerned about is how you can say that the Amberley Green is worthless. Uh, I can't imagine that that land and that property is worthless. It's, it's, it's green in the middle, I mean, in the middle of a city. Central Park isn't worthless. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hello, my name is Brenda Schoenfield and I live at 7640 Elbrook. I've been in the village for 49 years and um, on November the 5th, when we voted, I had a very puzzling experience. Um, for a while, I voted at Losanaville School, but most of my uh, time in Amberley, I have voted here at the courthouse. And even if it was a presidential election, there, was a f there were a few people at a time who came in to vote. They would come, they would go, just... Um, an ordinary amount of people. Uh, for the last eight years, I've been coming at 4.30 in the afternoon. I pick up my grandson from school, drop him off, and come to vote. I was so surprised when the room was full and people were double uh, abreast, out the door, almost up into the parking lot. And I recognized all of them, and they were voting in a block. There has been a recent migration from New York, which has populated the Elbrook area. Elbrook is a border street, from, and from Losanaville to Section Road, almost 95% of the people are recent migrants from the New York area and up Section Road to the railroad tracks and in the other direction to Farm Acres and up Elbrook to Twigwood, 75%. They have a very casual lifestyle. They have different values than Midwesterners. Sometimes the lawns are mowed Sometimes the leaves are collected, the children's toys and, and swimming pools are on the front lawn. It's um, when they get a citation, they ignore it. And if you feel that you are immune from this casual style of living, the migration is moving up Section Road because now most of Farm Acres is receiving these 
um, people who have migrated here from the New York area. Therefore, they voted in a block. I don't want you to delude yourself by thinking that you won a popularity contest on November the 5th. There were concessions made, or these people would not have voted in a block. And that's what's happening. And I can assure you, by the next election, there will be more people migrating from New York, and they will be running for the Amberley Village Council, and they will be um, having their values put on this village. So just think about that. And the most important thing you can bring to your job is a clear conscience. And I have been puzzled about what concessions were made that they was the largest turnout I have ever seen in 49 years. What did they get in return? Thank you. No, I feel, no, I do not feel that they would. This is what's been very okay, puzzling to me. They have an equal right to the ballot box, but why were more people at this election than in the 49 years that I was voted? Were they reciprocating something? Well, is this just your suspicion, or have you gone to the Board of Elections and have you asked them to um, show you the voter turnout percentage for Amberley Village on this past election versus any other previous election? Because I can tell you, as someone who has been actively running for council uh, in Amber and serving on council since 2011, Amberley does always have a high civic turnout for elections. I'm, it's something I'm very proud of that Amberley voters, they turn out, they show up and turn out. But the other question I have maybe is um, do you have, are you really making a property maintenance complaint? Because uh, that's, you are analyzing the property maintenance code. But, I, I, um, I am? I, I mean, I, I think I, it's a. I think it's, I think it's a, 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 a. little discouraged at your uh, by your uh, casting aspersions that are really not quite so couched in um, against a particular community in Amberley, and I suspect that you're talking about the Orthodox community. No, no, I am not talking about them specifically because there are two components to the Orthodox community. I'm talking about the newest arrivals. And I feel that I have come for eight years now at 4.30 in the afternoon, and I have never seen that many people come as a group at one time. Well, I really appreciate your taking an interest in voting and that you vote in every election, and as do I, and um, I, I, I really, I'm, I'm flabbergasted that you would pass dispersions on other citizens of Amberley Village who are exercising their legal right to vote. And okay. All right. I appreciate what you have to say. But as a consistent voter, when I saw this large group come together, I thought they were making a statement. They reelected the council by a very big majority and I have felt that they were promised something. And I have been very curious what the quid pro quo was.
Your Honor. Okay. The mayor, can I say we something? Need, <laughs> we need to move on to. Okay. But we do, we do need to um, Question. Um, Mr. Schoenfeld, you, you made a comment regarding um, ordinances not being followed and, and, and citations being ignored. Um, I'd just like to ask the manager, police chief, Truth to that? That's my one. That's no, one. we're we're constantly writing letters on that street as well as throughout the whole community. Um, are there houses, older houses, and things like that down there? Yes. Are we issu issuing a number of citations and sending letters out? Yes. We'll continue to do that throughout the entire village. We don't pick and choose where we do it at. Thank you. The, the other comment I had in terms of uh, voter turnout in this past election was actually under 50 percent which historically, and mind you, this is an off-year election. Um, imagine a uh, presidential election next year will attract many more voters. But, um, but we typically have a lot more people engaged in the voting process. So this past you know, November was actually on the low side rather than what's typical. Okay, okay now move on to the next uh, resident to address calling her. Uh, Colin Driscoll, 6600 Ridge Road. Uh, county, uh, county auditor records show the Ridge Club transferred four parcels known as Amberley Green to Amberley Village on October 10th, 2008. The county auditor performed their three-year reappraisal at the end of 08. The tentative value for the four parcels was set at 6.2 million. The village challenged the tentative value, stating it was too high. The village filed a counter complaint in July 2009, seeking a value of 4.6 million. The case was resolved at, a board, at the Board of Revision hearing that October, setting the value at $5.9 million. The auditor recently performed their three-year reappraisal at the close of 17. The 6.7 million assigned value was not challenged by the village. This same basic process governs the calculation of real estate taxes for every village resident. On multiple occasions in council sessions, I've heard the mayor state or strongly imply the property has little to no value. Council members present when these statements were made, made to me didn't publicly question this notion of little to no value. So my question is this, how can council fiduciaries negotiate the best value for what I've demonstrably just shown to be a multi-million dollar village asset working from a premise of little to no value? <clears throat> that's, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm short <laughs> for a change. <laughs> I know you said French Park has no value to the city and like Amberley Green really has no value to the village. And I would like if a new entity came into the city, I assume the city would would really say that it it's a valuable asset just as anybody that comes into the old Gibson site, we're going to talk about I would assume we'd promote, you know, Amberley Green and the value and the park and and that kind of a thing. And again, the point is that many residents do, you know, do want to be able to be a deep park. Keep the shots. I'm Steve Cushard, 3205 North White Tree Circle. Um, my comments tonight are more about the zoning, but it kind of ties into a little bit about what they've been mentioning about the property value of the green. But in the most recent village newsletter, I know we've got another work session coming up to talk about the zoning language changes. Um, and it was noted that the zoning language changes are necessary for any development on the property, but are particularly timely 
as the village considers this proposal we have from the JCC. So I have like three comments or three questions and one little comment at the end. My first question kind of goes around some of the, the property value things that have been talked about is that do you intend to make zoning changes to the green prior to having a master plan developed? Second question, do you intend to make zoning changes before getting an independent third party valuation of the Amberley, Amberley Green property? And the last question, in June, it was noted we offered the JCC the 30 acre property for a dollar a year. Do you, do you intend to move forward with this offer before getting this independent third party valuation on the property? Because to me, I mean, keep in mind, once you start down this development road, dirt gets moved, trees come down, you'll never be able to get you know, to return to what we currently have with our mature trees and rolling hills. I don't know how you can make a value proposition to our residents without first having a master plan, which I've talked about before, and knowing the current value of the property and the future value after these proposed zoning changes take place. To me, it's, it's I think they're two separate things you need to look at. Um, the one comment I'd like to make though is in late October, the mayor son published this two-page flyer they, that they had. They put up at the JCC. It was right up front in a, in a kiosk. And it was available primarily only to members of the J. And in this flyer, there we've looked, a number of us have looked at this. There was basically some misleading, unverifiable, inaccurate information that was communicated about the benefits to the village. Things such as virtually no cost, continued an increase revenue of several hundred thousand dollars per year, things like that. Then they came out with their media campaign, Business Journal, Enquirer, their open houses. And then right after that, and as I understand when they announced the open house, talking to a couple council people, council was kind of blindsided that they were doing this open house, that you didn't know about it. Now, I may be misinformed by that, but I was told that that was the case. I saw Tammy even put something out on Next Door Amberley that said, we have nothing to do with this, this is coming out. So, you know, to me, after three years of working with the village, is this how a trusted partner behaves? Uh, you know, they obviously wanted us to believe something was not entirely correct. And then since then, they've come out with another brochure that doesn't really mention any of the things that were pretty much talked about in this. So I just want to know is, did, did council or anybody from the village actually talk to the JCC about this first flyer that went out and then why they changed some of their information? You're welcome. I wasn't here at last council meeting, and I'd like to say, uh, first, I wanted to thank you and, and uh, Colin for, for uh, staging a uh, great campaign. Thank you. Um, regarding your question, your last question, um, uh, and this is something I've shared with council, um, I did have a, uh, an email sent to Mr. Fisher of the uh, actually commenting on that first flyer that we talked about regarding um, income to the village and asking him essentially the same questions that have been asked earlier this evening regarding um, what's the source of the income, is it guaranteed to the village, things along that nature, and never receive a reply. So to be clear, uh, there are people on council who are um, who want to know what the proposal is, and, and frankly I haven't seen a formal proposal from the J. Um, I'm waiting to see one, um, but, um, but to be clear, you know, we're elected officials and, we have, and we're fiduciaries to this village, and uh, that's, that's really what I want to share. Thank you. And council is not Okay. Thank you. But I would oh. add, um, nor, the, the JCC is, is not Amberley Village Council, and they do not have any you know, they, they're not required to come to council and ask permission to have an open house to inform their members or anyone who's interested in what they would like to do. And frankly, I wish that they had been taking more of a role in doing that uh, along the way so that members of the J and residents of the village could have even more insight into what their plans are. But, um, you know, they don't have any requirement to come and ask permission from us Run their business the way oh, I fully understand. But when they put out information that's somewhat misleading, we should challenge them on it. 
because they were obviously trying to persuade someone or something about their proposal. That's the, the only comment I have to make about that. Thank you. Jets 
That's for fun, means you, uh, you use about fifty thousand dollars in the agency's Southwest Jets escrow agency fund. You reduce by six thousand five hundred dollars. Accordingly, I move that we report the two thousand nineteen and fifteen performance appropriate appropriation for the fiscal year two thousand nineteen. Second. We moved and seconded in the adopt ordinance 2019 15, amending appropriations for fiscal year 2019. Are there any questions or comments? If not, it has been moved and seconded in the adopt ordinance 2019 15. Please call the roll. Richard Bardak? Yes. Peg Conway? Yes. Ed Hattenbach? Yes. Alita K. Mine? Yes. Tom Muthing? Yes. Ray Warren? Yes. Natalie Wolf? Finally, the finance committee met several times to review the budget for the upcoming year 2020 and by motion to adopt ordinance for 2019 and 16 to make appropriations for the anticipated expenditures for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2020. Uh, so, it will be interesting to get back reflecting on the items of 2019. Uh, the current tax revenue for 2019 will exceed the uh, current budget of estimated amount of $2,750,000. Uh, our expectations are that the uh, revenue will be close to $2,950,000. Uh, SFA revenue for 2019 uh, will exceed the uh, expenditure made in the number of 2018 projected in general funding for 2019. <coughs> Most is likely to be positive operating balance of approximately eighty seven thousand dollars, which includes a budget transfer of forty thousand dollars to sort of water fund. There is for the ability to increase realized revenues in 2019 pre tax share of local government fund was an interesting one. Accordingly, it looks like in, in summary the budget for 2020 uh, has expected revenues approximately $521,000. Uh, expected expenditures, which have been appropriated, of $563,000, so it's very small. Uh, surplus of the basic expenditures that we expect for 2020 are security and purchase property for two million. $2,333,000, public health $192,000, and utility services $226,000, property maintenance $2,550,000, transportation $15,000, general government fund, general government expenditures $1,400,000, uh, contingency is $20,000 for transfers, which are consistent over the past some years. I move to adopt uh, ordinance number 2019 16. Ordinance making the appropriation for expenses for village and air relief for the year. Second. Okay, we moved and seconded to the adopt ordinance 2019 16, making appropriations for fiscal year 2020. Are there any questions or comments? Thank you. Just wanted to um, ask. Maybe Scott and Tammy, for people who are interested in looking at our budget and all that, we use open textbook and we'll have this on our website and all that kind of stuff. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? I do think it's worth uh, stressing the thing that uh, Mr. Hattenbach pointed out is that the current outlook for 2019 is a surplus and the outlook for 2020 is also a surplus, which is contrary to what some others have said. Uh, so it has been moved and seconded in the adopt ordinance 2019 16, uh, making uh, appropriations for fiscal 2020. Please call the roll. Richard Bardak. Yes. Peg Conway. Yes. Ed Hattenbach. Yes. Alita K. Mine. Yes. Tom Muthing. Yes. Ray Warren. <coughs> Natalie Wolf. Yes. That concludes the budget. Okay, we'll now 
now move on to the police and fire plan. Thank you. Uh, the committee met uh, on November 27th uh, as part of the budget process to just for kind of informational purposes to hear uh, what was expected in the police fire budget for the upcoming year. Um, of note is that the chief is, has proposed an additional position uh, in the fire area to create a position of fire captain. Um, we, the committee was interested in learning more about that and continuing discussion about that. Uh, he noted that the fire operation is becoming more complex with more reporting and more things to keep track of and currently the duties are spread out over multiple people and it might be good going forward to have a concentrated job for someone to monitor the equipment and training and that. So we did recommend that that be funded at least partially in 2020 to see where that might lead. Um, as I've noted here before, we do meet at least quarterly, and so I think we will be discussing that further uh, as time goes on. We also began discussion that day of the EMS contract, emergency medical uh, services contract. We have had for many years a contract with both uh, Deer Park Silverton and Golf Manor, which is now Little Miami. Uh, we are coming to the end of a three-year contract. Um, currently, the rate this year we've paid $153,000. Um, the, they presented a renewal uh, proposal that jumped the rate up significantly next year to 168000 and then they wanted a 10% increase every year for five years, which was a very significant jump. Um, they did not seem amenable to negotiation, and so um, Scott and Chief kind of rejected that and began to look at other options, and the committee was on board with that. Uh, we met again on December 5th. Uh, to review a proposal that had been received from the city of Reading to provide our EMS. Um, it was a little, it's higher to start with, but with lower uh, increases. That day, there were also representatives from Deer Park Silverton and Little Miami who wanted you know, to weigh in further and kind of offer us more information. And they did, at this time, indicate some willingness to negotiate, so the committee opted to asked staff to work with them further to see what might be, be possible. And so we do not have a proposal for that tonight. We have to take one. We're aware that we're going to be having other meetings. So, um, that is Are there any questions? If not, we will move on to the streets, public, or no, I'm sorry, the health, education, and welfare. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> um, I have the privilege of reporting on uh, we thrive tonight. Health Education and Welfare Committee did not meet, but last Tuesday night, uh, Mayor, myself, and some other community members went to the We Thrive Annual Recognition Program, um, which celebrates schools, communities, and child care providers that have made a continued commitment to improving health and safety and vitality across Hamilton County. Uh, since the recognition program began in 2014, Hamilton County Public Health has been pleased to celebrate the accomplishments of the We Thrive communities, like ourselves in Andrew and Village, uh, at the annual event. Forty communities were celebrated, and Amberley Village um, uh, was recognized for um, their five years since, since 2014, when We Thrive was sort of revamped, um, creating new pathways in Amberley Village has been um, very involved with two, and currently two committees in the community working to make Amberley a better place to live, work, pray, and play, as they say, and we write. And I want to specifically mention that um, Carol Donnellan, who chairs our, uh, new, our new work on the chronic disease pathway, and Jim Rooley, were both nominated uh, as community champions for uh, our community, um, which is a designation given to someone who uh, puts their community first, tries to make the community a better place um, without any thought or recognition on their own. Um, so uh, I have your proclamation from the Hamilton County Board of Health that I'd like to quickly read and that I will hand over and hang it up somewhere outside the home. So um, this is a proclamation and recognition of the 2019 We Thrive Communities, whereas Hamilton County Public 
Public Health Speed Ride Initiative, established in 2009, and Amberly Village is a charter member, um, creates partnerships between communities, agencies, and public health to generate broad-based support for creating healthy environments for all residents where they live, work, learn, and play. And whereas Sampling County Public Health revitalized and expanded the We Thrive Initiative in 2014 to include additional pathways and processes to support the establishment of infrastructure within communities to enact meaningful change, whereas We Thrive Initiative encourages long-lasting change through creation and adoption of policies that support the health, safety, and vitality of the community, and whereas We Thrive Initiative seeks to engage communities in the development of a commi committee dedicated to the implementation of a selection of pathways focusing on major areas of health, safety, and preparedness. And whereas Amberley Village has assumed an active leadership role in improving the health and safety of its community members as a We Thrive community. Um, now therefore, we have proclaimed that Amberley Village has successfully met or exceeded continuation requirements for the 2019 We Thrive community recognition and that the Board of Health of Hampton County Public Health recognizes the Amberley Village for its ongoing commitment to improving the health, safety, and vitality of its community. And, um, I really, I hope that more of our residents and involved, I add, Dr. Abby Hubelis is here speaking tonight, and she's our newest community member representing Mercy Health on the Crocs Chronic Disease Pathway, and we would love to have um, members of other Amberley organizations and businesses uh, join us in um, making Amberley the best place to live for everyone. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Um, I'm going to uh, request that um, just for the sake of time, um, we have no action to take from the streets committee meeting uh, that we had uh, a week ago. Um, I just distributed the minutes uh, from that meeting. I haven't had any comments back. I may get comments. So I'd like to just defer this uh, discussion until our next council meeting, our next council meeting. Now move on to the Compensation and Benefits Committee. Great, thank you. Um, so the Compensation and Benefits Committee met on November 25th, and we actually had a variety of presentations in this committee. Um, we had, uh, had several conversations this year. We're always reviewing our benefits for our employees, making sure that we are competitive with our peers, that we are keeping our employees happy, that we're managing and stewarding our money appropriately. So we had some presentations on a couple of items that had been kind of brought up to us by our employees earlier in the year. So first we had a presentation on fire pay. It was a very interesting um, discussion about how our unique um, compensation works because of our joint, uh, you know, all our, our firefighters work in multiple and it's very complicated, so we had a very interesting presentation about that. And um, there was no action taken on that. We, um, we are not expecting to take any action on that, but, but we'll stay tuned for, um, the chief uh, alerted us that there are kind of always ongoing review in his department about um, ways to bonus and compensate uh, folks who respond to fire calls. Next, we talked about um, the employee severance fund. That was just an update. Again, um, as Councilmember Conway mentioned, we got a, you know, kind of in the context of budget updates, um, this com each committee kind of got updates on different things related to the budget. In this case, um, it was about the employee severance fund. This is a really smart thing that we have been doing to budget for um, kind of the, the um, I'm going to try to say this delicately. We, we have a, a workforce that is, um, we, we expect retirements coming in the next several years, um, and we are basically putting aside money smartly each year so that we are not uh, completely blindsided by a big hit in a couple of years, like a giant hit with having to um, get the kind of the cash out of the money that comes when people uh, hit retirement. So we are, again, budgeting uh, $40,000 that we put in this year's, um, in this 2020 budget for that, and, and that has now a very healthy balance. Uh, we also um, had a discussion about PTO. Again, this is sort of wonky government uh, stuff, but um, our employees receive their um, time off through different buckets. Vacation time, sick time, PTO comes from different buckets, unlike many in the private sector who are used to sort of like one big bucket for things. And so we had a, a presentation and conversation about how that works. 
and ask um, the administration to come back to us about whether PTO, we could review the opportunity for PTO to not come from sick time. We felt like we wanted to see what other options are. We're not really on par with our peers on that, uh, peer communities, so we're gonna ask for some additional uh, stuff on that. Um, and then also coming soon, just very quickly, we I introduced um, an ordinance that I've been working on to revise um, other, as part of our administrative um, code, administrative procedures in our code around our family, our, somewhat archaic by its drafting uh, family leave policy for our employees. Um, that is, uh, we started, I introduced it, had some conversation, we expect to have that back at a committee, so if that's a topic of interest, stay tuned. That'll be back in committee and then back at uh, council in the new year, hopefully. Um, but the real, the real uh, reason that we're here today is um, a happy thing, our annual holiday gift card for our gift card program for our employees. This is a um, holiday gift and bonus that we do for our employees every year. Uh, we once again, um, the committee is recommending to council that we that we um, thank our employees, who we are very grateful for all their hard work during the year, uh, with this small token of our appreciation. And once again, this year we are recommending $250 gift cards for each of our full-time employees. This year we're adding um, kind of an official designation that part-time employees will also receive gift cards, but theirs will be at the $100 level. So um, I am. I need to make a motion that counts to council that we, um, to, to recommend that we uh, recommend to the manager, to the manager, I guess, to, Im to implement our um, holiday gift card program. Sorry, please, for the holidays. Second. Okay, we moved and seconded and authorized the village manager to implement the uh, employee uh, holiday gift card program in accordance with the same as we've done in the past. Any questions or comments? If not, it's been moved and seconded and the authorized village manager to implement the gift card program the same as we've done in the past. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Be noted that that resolution passes unanimous. And that concludes my report. Okay. So we <coughs> now move on to the manager. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I want to mention five items out of my manager's report. I want to brag a little bit about the uh, savings that our residents have realized from the energy aggregation program, primarily the electric aggregation program. Uh, so far, from January through September, the report just came out that our residents have saved over $61,000 in our electric aggregation program. So, uh, we can start the second item in regards to the Duke Natural Gas Line, the, uh, this past month, the Ohio Power Siding Board did approve Duke's application to install the Central Corridor Gas Line. Uh, that is a project that has been in the works for quite some time and it will uh, affect Amberley Village on the southwestern part of the village in the industrial area. It does run the railroad tracks that travel north and south to see the same railroad tracks across section of road. Have been given the green light to proceed with that The third item is the leaf collection that is ongoing, it has been for the last uh, month and a half. The village will continue to collect leaves as residents put those to the, to the street. We will be collecting leaves up through uh, December the 27th. At the same time, we're still collecting the brush light programs, so we're collecting brush at the same time. Uh, once we get into January, leaf collection will cease and we will go back to full brush collection. Our emphasis, emphasis will then be on snow and ice control. In September, the council was asked to take action on applying for a grant for North Farm Press. And so that grant was submitted. Our village was not successful in receiving uh, approval from the um, integrated committee, which is the step before it goes to the Ohio Public Works Commission. This is for the area of Farm Press, of the Beck Sword, and South Farm Press, as well as part of the So this is the fifth year that we've been turned down for that particular project. The good news is that we did make the rank for the contingency funds, uh, but uh, that would mean that uh, at least two or three projects, you know, magnitude of them, would have to drop out um, for the village's North Farm Press Drive project in the fall. One of the things that we committed to was uh, the application for a piece of Kincaid was through a, a different grant process. We will find out most likely in February of the 
successful with that or not. If we are successful with that, that positions us differently for the Farm Crest grant application for OPWC for next year. After all that has occurred, most likely in the uh, winter, we'll be having a briefs uh, committee meeting to talk about the uh, road condition assessment, any options we have in regards to street reconstruction, and looking for other sources of funds, how we might be able to approach uh, streets like Farm Press and others in the village that uh, need significant. And to end on a positive note, just to give you an idea of the grants that the village has been successful in 2019, the village has uh, been successful with over $100,000 grants. So I think the budget hearings have heard about the most recent one, which is the mini excavator to be used at the compost site, the north site, but we also received money this year for the uh, Herald Task Force and for Ohio Power Fire Marshal Training. And that's an addition over time that we can compensate them for through the state of the Jack. But it's pretty impressive that a little over hundred thousand dollars been brought back to the village. Those are your tax dollars and being brought back to the village. Any questions for me? Two things really quick on on Farm Crest, obviously I've probably said this in the um, streets committee meeting, but just want to make sure that when we have those meetings that we have plenty of notice for the residents on those streets for trying to follow along on what's happening with, with that particular issue and um, that we're just, you know, giving a lot of notification to them and, and keeping them in the loop, uh, good, bad, and ugly, unfortunately. Um, on, the, on the Duke pipeline, um, I know you may not know yet, and I certainly uh, don't know, but it, it seems um, that that is the thing that has happened. There, there are still interveners, including Amberley, and there may be discussions ongoing, to my understanding, potentially about, uh, yeah, and NOPE certainly talked about litigation and, and challenging that uh, in the courts and all that sort of stuff. So this may not be over, and certainly even in what, again, my understanding is, is that um, there were a variety of conditions, even on what the OPC did, that included a lot of meetings with communities like that, even if before construction and all kinds of stuff. So um, we may, first of all, we may not have heard the end of it. We may still be, I, don't know, I mean, this is sort of a general question and comment over here. Um, and we just may not know enough yet. Maybe this is a, a more information that our next meeting will know more um, about what the status of that is. But uh, in addition, we also would expect that if all of that fails, that there'll be more reports and reporting, hopefully, to the village and Scott that you'll, you'll have more for us. That's a comment, but I think a question, yes? Sort of, yes. <laughs> okay. I had the same question about pipeline. It was my understanding. I, I did. I was not aware of appeals or litigation, but that they are supposed to be pre-construction with every community that's involved. And is is the intervener group, the legal group, is that still active at all, or could it be, or? Yes, it is still active. Okay. There was a, a conference call last week among uh, various solid branches. Uh, Personally, speaking to myself, I interested in our solicitor maintaining his presence in that group. We are. And, you know, kind of I limited him with kind of resources to commit to some kind of process, but at least staying on board with it. Thank you. We are. Any other questions for me? Chief, do you have anything? No report. Okay. Uh, for the mayor's report, uh, first of all, uh, in the village manager's report, towards the end of the report, is the meeting schedule for 2020. Please, all council members, look at that uh, meeting schedule at our January meeting. We will address any conflicts as we, we do in the past, uh, and we can at the January meeting, passed by resolution, any dates that due to conflict with Jewish holidays or anything where we have to move. But please plan on bringing your uh, calendars with you for the January meeting so that we can resolve any potential conflicts. Um, secondly, with respect to uh, committee assignment for the council term 2019-21, uh, I have 
the proposed committee assignments, they are virtually identical to what we had uh, in the prior council term. The only change will be on the law committee uh, and that uh, Councilwoman Kamine will be replacing uh, Councilman Hackback. Uh, that was done to better balance the committee assignments across everyone. All other assignments are proposed to remain the same. Um, but if there are any issues, please let me know. So I will pass out those committee assignments to everyone. Uh, the only other item I want to mention, the Environmental Stewardship Committee has established their uh, meeting timetable for uh, 2020. The next meeting will be January 27th. They will again meet eight times during 2020. The meetings are generally on the fourth Monday of, every, of the months that they hold, hold meetings. Uh, they occur at seven o'clock in the community room. The meetings will occur in the months of January, February, March, May, um, July, September, October, and November. I know in the case of the month of May due to uh, Memorial Day occurring on that fourth Monday, it is earlier, and I believe in the, uh, in the meeting schedule for, oh no, I think November, November's one that sometimes has to change because of Thanksgiving, but I think it's not. And uh, Tammy, I think those are on our website now, or will be? Okay. And that concludes my marriage report. Any questions? If not, any new business? If not? Okay, I'd like to move that we go into executive session to consider the annual review of the village manager, including employment and compensation of village manager. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we adjourn into executive session to consider the uh, appraisal of the village manager as well as compensation uh, for the village manager. Any questions or comments? If not, it's been moved, moved and seconded that we adjourn into executive session. Please call the roll. Richard Barnett. Yes. Peg Conway. Yes. Ed Haddenbach. Yes. Alita K. Myers. I'm mute Yes. Ray Warren. Yes. Natalie Wolf. Yes. And for those present, uh, at the end of the executive session, we will be coming back in the general session, but um, it will probably be just to adjourn the, consistent with what we've done in the past on the evaluation of the village manager, this, this, is, this probably will continue into our January meeting where we'll be finalized and in the January meeting, we will make a report out uh, to um, the public on what the uh, council has determined with respect to the uh, appraisal of the building manager, including compensation. So, if you want to wait around, and, 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 and it may not be necessary.